Have you ever gotten a Christmas or a birthday gift that you wish you could get rid of? Well, AMD is attempting to get a handful of folks to look at the shiny new Intel CPU that they just won in the same way that they'd look at an ugly reindeer sweater. Intel recently gave away over 8,000 Core i7-8086 processors to celebrate their 50th anniversary, but AMD is crashing the party by announcing that the first 40 contest winners who get in touch with them will be able to trade in their Core i7s for a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X with 16 cores. That is 10 more than the 8086. Though it should be noted that the i7's single-threaded performance still puts it ahead in many benchmarks. Nonetheless, it is a tantalizing proposition for content creators or just anyone who wants more cores than their neighbors. So if you're interested, the offer opens on June 25th and unsurprisingly is for US residents only. But something that isn't just for Americans is the two new services that YouTube opened up today. The video hosting giant is rolling out YouTube Music and YouTube Premium, not just in the United States, but also Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, and 11 European countries. YouTube Music is a full-fledged audio streaming service designed to compete with Spotify and Apple Music, and they are touting its search feature that is supposedly more intelligent than what their competitors are providing as a selling point, even claiming that queries like that hipster song with the whistling will work thanks to machine learning or something. Music comes in a free ad-supported version and a paid version for $9.99 a month, while Premium, the other new offering, includes YouTube music as well as ad-free video viewing and a number of YouTube original shows for $11.99 a month. Though they haven't talked that much about the original shows in the, uh, in the advertising materials, probably because most of them aren't very good. A report from KitGuru this morning mentioned that many users of Asus and Acer's new fancy 4K 144 Hertz displays look rather blurry once they turn them up north of 120 Hertz. As it turns out, this is due to a technique called chroma subsampling, a form of image compression that is necessary because the DisplayPort 1.4 spec simply doesn't have the bandwidth to support a 4K 144 Hertz signal without compression. Although Anontech did report last month that chroma subsampling was being utilized by both monitors, many gamers are crying foul because neither Asus nor Acer were particularly transparent about the issue, instead pushing the 4K 144 angle in their marketing copy. I guess next time maybe they should screen it a little better. And now it's time for BitQuits, brought to you by Memory Express. Whether you're a gamer, business owner, or literally anyone else, Memory Express is your go-to destination in Canada for electronic products and services. If it uses electricity, there is a good chance that Memory Express carries it. Plus, with their Uber price beat guaranteed, they'll beat any authorized Canadian retailer's price by 10% of the difference, both in store and online. So check out the link below for all the details. Just don't try to use Uber price beat to get a ride to the airport or whatever. That's, that's not what they do. Google Translate can be frustrating, but one inaccurate translation has one man counting his blessings. After police in Kansas pulled over a man who only spoke Spanish, the officer used Google Translate to ask permission to search his car, but it came out in Spanish as, can I search for the car? After the man said yes, a large amount of cocaine and meth was found in the vehicle, but a judge threw out the drug evidence earlier this month, ruling that the botched translation caused the driver's consent to be invalid. Huh, <sighs> makes me wonder, like what if he'd been caught a few years from now after Google's AI improves its uh, Espanol? Speaking of being caught, Pokemon Go has finally given players the ability to trade Pokemon with other trainers. It comes with a few caveats though. You can't trade unless you're at level 10, and you can only trade with people you add as friends, and only when they're within 100 meters of you. Someone should tell the casuals over at Niantech that this isn't how it worked in the TV show. The iPhone 3GS is, for some reason, back on store shelves in South Korea. The mobile phone carrier SK Telink, SK Telink, T-Link? 
somehow found a huge cache of brand new 3GSs that it somehow didn't get around to selling back in the day. They will cost you about 44,000 won each, which is not nearly as much as it sounds like. That's only about 40 American dollars for this unused piece of electronics history. Moving back stateside, Foxconn has announced that it will base its North American headquarters in Milwaukee, not far from a factory that the company acquired where it plans to employ 13,000 people to make displays. Just remember this so you won't have a heart attack next time you see Made in the USA on the back of like a monitor or something. And speaking of foxes, the Fox Networks are trying to jazz up commercial breaks in an age where everyone is getting used to streaming content without two minutes of ads by letting brands sponsor inspirational commercials focused on people who have overcome some illness or physical limitation in what they call brand storytelling. I'm not quite sure how well this will go over, but I, it, it might be an improvement over watching a sales pitch for an embarrassing prescription hearing the story of someone whose life was changed by an embarrassing prescription. What is the difference here? All right, since I've got to go take care of some embarrassing medications of my own, wow, I can't believe they wrote that in there. Uh, we are all out of time for today, so get subscribed and we'll see you right back here on Wednesday. Or a different day if you're over the international dateline, I don't know, time zones. It's, it's a fair thing.